hunt. Mike is careful to travel into the wind because this helps them gain an advantage over an adversary who can smell a human from over three miles away. I mean, you could waste a lot of time and, and cover a lot of ground and look a lot of country over that. You no, know, you just won't see very many bears. It only you go back to where we've always seen them and where we've found them before. It's going to be too noisy next to this stream. We're going to get, get away from that. A veteran guide like Mike knows that chasing a bear can be a losing proposition, so he elects to stay put and lure a bear to him. He chooses a prime position and uses a deer distress call ah! on Kodiak. The hunter must be willing to be the bait. Ah! Using a distress call requires a vigilant eye. The bears can answer the call from any direction, and sensing an easy meal will be stealthy in an effort to ambush their prey. You'd have to be really careful where you use the call like this, where it's real close like this. A sow and cubs could come running right in on you. After 10 minutes of using the distress call, the weather shifts and the fog cuts visibility to just a few yards. Mike Horstman's gut tells him he's likely to be on the wrong end of an ambush and to pull back. They're coming. I mean, they're just going to blow right in here. And they're going to be so close, so fast, they're not going to have time to regain their composure when, before they can realize what, what it was, it they're going to be right on us. Yeah. And somebody's going to get hurt. 